Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Northminster United Church in Calgary. It is good we can be together on this May 2nd, 2021. We are a family of faith growing together and deepening our love with God's neighbors near and far. And we pray that this time of worship will be refreshing for your spirit and help you draw closer to God. We have lit our Christ candle already this morning, remembering that the light that Jesus came to bring um, is a reminder ever present for us of his divine peace and that this light shines for all people. And we also just pause to focus our hearts and minds in this time in trusting everything beyond these walls to God's embrace. And we give thanks in a moment of gratitude that we remember that we live and work and worship and play on Treaty 7 land, giving thanks for all the generations before us who have been stewards of this place. We are a resurrection people, those who seek new life and new beginnings. And we, the church, must be a place of knowing and growing and accepting love. We hear today in one of our scripture readings of a question asked by the Ethiopian eunuch. He says, here is water. What is it to keep me from being baptized? As we dance into diversity and acceptance, may the Spirit guide our steps, for nothing is keeping us from it. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Dancing requires that we pay attention, right? Pay attention to the steps. That we watch for the steps of those who have danced this life before and that we watch the steps of those who are, are seeking and questioning and dreaming, and how those steps can lead us to also seek and hope and dream. Imagine now, if you can, just for a moment, imagine if you can a dreamer in whose steps you would like to follow. Who is that person, that dreamer that you would like to follow? How did they choreograph their dance of life? Now imagine yourself following their steps with courage and joy. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is the call that we look to the skies, whether it be rain or shine, and we're getting a bit of both of that today by the looks of it. But look around and see and remember and recognize that you do not dance alone. If rain still lingers, open up the umbrellas of praise and set out anyway. Let's pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, open us to learn new steps of faithfulness. Give us courage and patience. Come and dance with us. Engage with us as we seek you. So that we too can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now. 
we pray. Amen. Let's now sing together our opening hymn, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Our dreamer that I would like to talk about with you today is a woman named Marian Anderson. She was a singer and she was an African American woman. Marian's favorite music in all the world was classical music. She was an opera singer. She loved that music when she was growing up and as she became an adult. And no one in her time had ever really seen or heard of an African-American opera singer. Now, when you were studying and wanting to learn more about that music, you had to have voice lessons. To be an opera singer, that was essential. And her family were quite poor growing up. And so the idea of paying someone to offer Marian voice lessons was just out of the question. It was not possible. Her parents could not afford it. But Marion had this dream. She dreamed one day that she would sing and be on stage at the Metropolitan Opera. And that's something in her time that no other black person had ever done. So Marion just kept on dreaming and she kept on trying and she sang wherever she had opportunity. She sang in her choir at church. She sang at school whenever she could. And she just tried and tried and tried to teach herself until one day finally other people seeing her dream some friends stepped forward and offered to pay for her to have a voice teacher marion said that when you stop having dreams and ideals well you might as well stop altogether so she didn't stop she kept on dreaming and she kept on trying it wasn't always easy. Even later when she was trying to go to a music school, she was not admitted because of the color of her skin. After that happened, Marion said, I was terribly crushed, terribly disappointed. But holding on to her dreams, she kept trying, she kept dreaming, and her dreams finally 
did pay off. And indeed, she did become the first African-American to sing in an opera at the Metropolitan Opera in New York. I think maybe the best part of Marion's dreams was that she used her accomplishments to work for racial equality. Sort of like Martin Luther King did with his preaching and his words, except that Marion did it with singing and with her voice. She said that her dreams were, and her quote was, to leave behind me the kind of impression that will make it easier for those who follow. I like that to leave behind me the kind of impression that will make it easier for those who follow. She wanted to pass on her dreams, and she did. And now, of course, there are people all over the world who are of African-American descent singing opera, thanks to Mary Ann Anderson's dream. I included this reflection in the worship mail-out that goes to people who don't have online ability to worship. And Sheila Johnson reached out to me. She has seen Marian Anderson perform on stage. So if you want to hear more about that, give Sheila Johnson a call because she would love to tell you more about that experience. One of the colorful umbrellas or our colorful umbrellas, are a sign of hope, aren't they? They are a sign of hope even on rainy days. So today we're going to take one of Marian Anderson's phrase, and we're going to put it our, on our umbrella as we've been doing through our season of Easter. And I think today what I want to write is, sing what you love. That's a good message for all of us. Sing what you love. An important message, never stop dreaming, never stop singing. Sing what you love. Let's join together in a repeat after me prayer. Please, please join me with these words. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for all they are and all they do. Let us become like dreamers true and bring new life to me and you. Amen. Our first reading of two readings on this May 2nd is from Psalm 22nd, verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation my vows I will pay before those who fear God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Holy One shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For dominion belongs to the one who rules over the nations. To this one, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down, and I shall live for God alone. Prosperity will serve God. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim God's divine deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that God indeed has done it. And our next reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. And so he went up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch replied, How can I, 
unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So Philip is told in our second story today, our second scripture that Suzanne read, he's told by an angel to get up and go, and he does. One more biblical example of people who are just moved by the Spirit and let the Spirit take lead in their lives. And as he goes, and a little bit into this story, there is this person, an Ethiopian eunuch. He is a court official. And now, by court, I don't mean a legal court, but an assistant, a high-up assistant in a court of royalty, in charge of the queen's treasury. A eunuch is someone who would be considered in his day less than human because he was castrated. And this was often the case of people in his position in a royal court, because to have been considered, being called a eunuch, being castrated, he would not have been considered as much of a threat to the people they served. But like I said, it also meant in his time, in that society, sadly, that a eunuch could never be considered part of or welcomed into the kingdom of God in Jewish culture. He'd never be enough in the eyes of that faith. We also know in this story that this particular eunuch was very wealthy because it said he rode a chariot, a chariot large enough for two people to sit in and ride in. It's quite a story. Philip listens to this angel. Then he he goes on this road, on this journey, The angel says, I'll never tell you what to do when you get there, whatever that is or wherever that is, right? So so he goes. He just does it. He doesn't have an end in sight or a destination in mind or a particular task. The angel just says, go, and he does. He encounters on this journey the person, the eunuch. There's this conversation that ensues. And here I really see that the spirit is at work. Because there's this element, I mean, we could just talk about conversion, of if that's our goal, is to convert the world. And that's often what the story is used for, go out and convert and make people followers of Christ. But I think there's more to that here. There is in this story, with the Spirit at work, there's this element of mutuality. It's not just about one person for another, but Philip and the eunuch have this sort of mutual engagement, this connection. And that's despite all their differences. They've come from different places. They have different faiths and so on. They are very different individuals. And so as Philip and the eunuch share in this story, 
share in story, share in conversation. They, they talk about how to, how to interpret scripture. There's just so much going on here between the two of them. And Philip, in all of this, introduces the eunuch to the good news of Jesus as, and how indeed the kingdom of God does include the eunuch. Laura Everett says, and I like this, she says that to fully know the gospel, we need one another and we need the stranger. That to fully know the gospel, we need to sit side by side with people who are wildly different from us. Indeed, that was the case in this text. Philip was appointed as a deacon of the church or in the church. A deacon was appointed to take care of widows and take care of poor people in the church. So if you were really down and out, if you needed something, you would go and you would talk to the deacon. You would go and you would talk to Philip to see if the church could help. What's interesting here is that the eunuch recognizes that. He recognizes that Philip has something to offer in terms of bringing, maybe not physical help, but something to offer in terms of bringing light to the scriptures. And so the eunuch invites him into his chariot, into this big carriage to sit alongside him. After some discussion around all of this and the, the idea of the Isaiah passage, Philip's explanation of of who Jesus was, the eunuch is starting to get excited and see things a little bit differently. And, And he looks ahead and he sees some water and that's when he exclaims, look, here is water. What is to prevent me right now from being baptized? Right? That's that, that big question. It's sort of a loaded question, isn't it? Because we know there's nothing in the way if we are living the good news of Jesus. And I think that's what the gospel writer intended, that there's little doubt in Luke when he recorded this question, that exactly what is to prevent anyone from being baptized? Nothing should ever be in the way from fully knowing the kingdom of God. What can wealth do to get in the way, or, or race, or sexual identity, or understanding, or ability, and so on. The good news is for all to share in the fullness of life with God and each other. This story was recorded because it was meant to inspire hope, even in the face of persecution and difficulties. Maybe it was to show just how much the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. Throughout the book of Acts, you find stories of men and women who are filled with the Holy Spirit, those inspirational stories. We hear, we see those stories, we're inspired by them, how their hearts listen Their hearts listen to the indwelling of the Spirit of God inside of them. Like Philip listening to the commands of the angel in our story. Get up. Go, Philip. Philip, go to Samaria. Philip, go to Gaza. Philip, go to the eunuch. Philip, go get your four daughters who are prophets. Okay, you're right. I haven't read that part of the story yet. That's the story that comes after this text in Acts, and you need to go and read it. That's a great story because his four daughters, Philip's four daughters, become preachers and prophets. So yes, people filled with the Holy Spirit. Philip was being given specific instructions from God. And Philip listens to that inner voice of God inside him. It wasn't merely his his conscience. It wasn't an angel with wings. It wasn't a dream or a nightmare. It was that inner guiding voice of God, the spirit of Jesus. And so we, like Philip, listen to that inner guiding voice as God talks to us as well, right? Every day, if we're listening, how God talks to us about our relationships or our kids, 
or our, our parents or finding a house or downsizing or changing jobs or being drawn into a new community or just some sort of big life decision that we're facing. That inner guiding voice of God is there in those times. And so what do we want to learn from this story around that idea that indeed is there for us to listen to that voice of God inside as we approach our daily decisions. Otherwise, those bigger things might not happen, those important conversations and moments like Philip experienced with the eunuch. But what else? What else can we learn from this story about Philip today? What else is this stuff about? What is this stuff about the eunuch or going to Samaria The meaning, I think, is quite clear in the text, that when the power of God gets inside you, it eliminates all barriers and all boundaries. There are many kinds of prejudices in our world, aren't there? Certainly, racial prejudice comes to mind right away. How what we were taught of kids still plays out um, in our world sometimes. Ever present right now is the Black Lives Matter movement. It's crucial right now regarding injustices. We also hear, though, right now about Asian hate. And and yet that's not new, is it? That's been a part of our society thinking here in Canada for for decades. Think of the Japanese internment camps during World War II and how uh, people were forced to move inland into camps and how their, their homes and their businesses were sold to pay for their their care in these camps. There are sexual prejudices as well. So many people still believe that women are somehow inferior to men and can't or shouldn't have certain careers. Just like people have been carefully taught that eunuchs cannot inherit the kingdom of God in our story or that queer people somehow can't be truly Christian It's ridiculous and it's hateful that we would ever believe or try to uphold such things, isn't it? Of course, there's there's religious prejudices against many different faiths in our society, against Muslims most certainly, for example, very prevalent. And so for years we have been influenced in these ways, but our good news from our text today offers something completely different. Sadly, some might use the Christian way to uphold boundaries and prejudice, but Jesus was never about that, about upholding the empire's way or upholding the status quo. Instead, he stood for the absolute inclusive, fully inclusive, no matter what kind of love of God, which was a very alternate way to the world. If the story of Philip and the eunuch is true, if the post-resurrection world is a world where all are welcome, then we have a lot to uphold, a lot to change, don't we? A lot. Let's not kid ourselves. Change is hard. Change makes demands on our hearts, our minds, our lifestyles, our liturgies, the language we use. Sometimes we'd rather just avoid those things. But this is the work of conversion. This is the ongoing work of growing in our faith. And it's not about expecting others to change, to fit into our way. Why else is the mainline church dying? It's the other way around. It's it's about us adapting. Let us not demand the hard work of conversion from others if we are going to remain unwilling to change ourselves. We have a lot of work to do as we envision the future, and it won't look the same going forward into a a new decade, a new year, a new building, a new future, whatever it might be, Things won't be the same way they always were. And so how do we open our hearts? How do we open our minds to engage and be a part of what is really happening all around us? There is some really beautiful commentary out there. There's lots, actually, on the book of Acts. 
but there's a theologian named Willie James Jennings. And I love a quote of what he says that describes the story of the eunuch in this way. He says, faith found the water. Faith will always find the water. I like that. Faith found the water. Faith will always find the water. The eunuch wanted God as much as God wanted him. So God broke that connection between identity and destiny that you're forced down a certain road because of who society thinks you are. And God broke that connection between definition and labeling and determining the future. And God inserted this new trajectory. Just as that roadside water created possibility for the eunuch to participate in a baptismal society, one that people couldn't envision because he was black, because he was queer, because he was a foreigner. The water changed that. Same for us. There is nothing to prevent any one of us from being baptized into God's liberating love. As this story makes abundantly clear, the Spirit will do what the Spirit will do. And the only question then remains is whether we'll participate in all that is happening around us. Will we participate in the joyful post-resurrection work that God is doing? Look, here is water. What is to prevent us from stepping in? Amen. We're going to hear a song now that was created by... Um, the choir director at Islington United in Toronto, he made this opportunity available for United Church folks from across Canada to join in this virtual choir, and a couple of us from Northminster did. You might recognize some faces in this. So let's now um, sing. The words might not be there, but they're very repetitive. You can join in as we sing together, Peace for the Children. Children. 
Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. If you have any prayers you would like to name this morning, please do type them into the comment section of our Facebook feed. Let's pray. For the beauty of the world in all its diversity, we give you thanks, O oh God. May our gratitude fill our days. O oh God, who makes all things new, new stars, new dust, new life, take our hearts, every hardened edge and measured beat, create something new in us. We need your newness, God, the rough parts made smooth, the stagnant stirred, the stuck freed, the unkind forgiven. And then by the power of your spirit, we need to be turned toward love again. We need your healing, O oh God, for our troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in mind, body, relationships, and spirit. Teach us what it means to live as children of the light, generously sharing your abundance with no barriers or boundaries with our brothers and sisters in need. We remember in prayer those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We also pray these prayers, prayers from Kim for the people of India, that there may be an end to the unbelievable struggle, that it will end soon. Prayer from Sue for prayers for the continued healing of their family and friends with COVID. Prayer from Jan for all those who are supporting family and friends through this difficult time. Prayers for Marcy's friend, Autumn's neighbors, who are in hospital with COVID. 
her friend Arena, who has also been diagnosed with COVID-19 variant, and has prayers as their family is being tested. Marianne is asking for prayers for Chelsea's kindergarten teacher who is very ill with COVID and for her quick recovery and for all affected by COVID-19. Barb is asking for prayers uh, for strength for her sister and brother-in-law as they face significant health challenges within their immediate family. Kim offers prayers for Winona as she continues with her struggles with health issues. Brad is asking for prayers for those who are isolated, to all those seniors even more isolated by the pandemic. And prayers for all the special birthdays coming up, the ones we know, the ones we don't know. Prayers to all who are celebrating in these times. And a prayer from Tracy, prayers of thanks for spring, for new life and flowers and rain. Please do continue to share with one another your prayers as you can. Come, O God, and hear our prayers, prayers spoken, prayers held in silence. Come, O God, and restore our lives. Join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Beginning of worship during the threshold moment, I asked you to think about someone who has danced steps ahead of you and how those steps have influenced yours. And I invite you to just think a little bit more about that, about people who have danced through their lives, through generations before us, and how those folks' steps have guided our own, and, and how those steps have reminded us just how loved and blessed we are. In all of that, what transformation is possible as we abide with God, as we listen for God's voice, as we find our own groove of praise and thanks with our congregation as a congregation? 
our financial gifts make this possible. Our resources and our steps that we take bring life and wholeness to this larger community through the offerings that we make. And so we thank everyone who make gifts of, of, of offering and gifts of time and talent and so on because they do matter. Let's pause and bless these gifts. Holy God, healer of body and soul, we experience freedom and renewal as we share our abundance. Receive the fullness of our offerings, receive the gifts of our lives. Increase the joy in our serving. Set free the love of doing your work. Bless us and these gifts, we pray. Amen. Lots to read in your weekly Friday email from top to bottom. Take a moment, enjoy all the graphics, all the words. Be sure to share that information with those in our church and those beyond our church family so more can uh, participate and, and know what's going on at Northminster. Um, a few highlights, of course, after church today is coffee. You're always invited to gather between 11.30 and 12 on Zoom. Same link every week. If you don't have it, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me for it. We are looking for stories. We are looking for stories that you can collect, that you could reach out to friends and family close to Northminster, in the community, across the country, United Church or otherwise, and ask them about what great things are happening in terms of ministry, programs, possibilities in their church or in the community. And obviously COVID's changed that a bit, but ask them about what great things that they would love to share in story um, and, and, and collect those stories and send them in to me because uh, we're doing a bit of a collection as we envision our future and we'd love to hear what's going on and share those stories with Northminster. Craft night is this Friday night for those who'd like to gather on Zoom, bring something handy you're working on and enjoy the conversation. Also coming up is an event about RESPs. And a lot of you might say, nope, nothing to do with me. My kids are long gone and grown up. But this could be really great for grandparents as well as you think about your grandchildren's futures and education. So take note of the details and sign up if you would like to attend that information night with Northminster and our community partner, Caria. And lastly, the plants. We have had such an amazing response to this plant fundraiser. We have managed to raise more than $1,300, all while enjoying the beautiful colors of the season and what we're planning for in our yard. So thank you for that. Thank you, for, um, thank you to Marianne Wickerson and Barb Johnson for organizing this for us. And take note of the 16th. You'll be able to pick up your plants on Sunday the 16th in the afternoon. Everything else, again, take time to read in your weekly email. A blessing to end this time. Um, today I'd like to begin with um, a poem by the poet, really, and songwriter Leonard Cohen. And he penned these words that we can surely lift to God. Cohen writes, Dance me to your beauty with a burning violin. Dance me through the panic till I'm gathered safely in. Lift me like an olive branch and be my homeward dove. Dance me to the end of love. Oh, let me see your beauty when the witnesses are gone. Let me feel you moving like they do in Babylon. Show me slowly what I only know the limits of. Dance me to the end of love. Beautiful. May we too dance and follow the lead of the Spirit to love as we find expansive ways to dance the dance of love. And may the loving God and the risen Christ and the dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. Amen. Let's go out singing. There's a spirit in the air. There's a spirit in the air Telling Christians everywhere Praise the Lord 
that grow.